figure out what it is yet. <laughs> Uh, good afternoon at this point, Madam Chair, members of the board. It is not lost on me that it is 12.10 and I stand between you, well, and myself and lunch. So <laughs> I will be brief um, but thorough and I can go as fast or slow down as you have questions. So to uh, the executive director's point, this is a very brief and I need to um, reiterate that this is a very brief synopsis of the both creative qualitative study that we initiated last summer and due to governing board agenda items that have crept up since the conclusion of this study again last summer uh, we are now presenting so this study was started and completed again in the summer of 2018 so there was no delay on the results or anything like that it's just due to governing board agenda items we are um, now getting it uh, in front of you so what, as a reminder, the district did is we looked at four common areas with Post Creative as a company out of Gainesville to understand better the brand awareness, brand perception, audience communication, and then we talked, um, they called it internal empowerment, but we talked to employees about what the district can do to better serve them in communication and outreach efforts. So those were four main pillars. So the research methodology that we used, uh, some of the venues and outlets that we use were through social media, the website, external communication, and then we, they analyzed media coverage. And they did that through survey and interview questions, qualitative and quantitative data. We had a high response from the general public and district employees, and we had what we consider a low response from the board and government legislators. So this is just a list of different types of organization groups that they uh, surveyed. And we worked with them to identify what those groups would be based on our stakeholder input. We had uh, 305 responses, which based on the population size of our district is an appropriate response rate. So we were very, very um, happy with the response rate. So this, again, is a very high level uh, executive summary of the findings. So the average perception of the district is positive. So on a one to six scale, you can see that we're right there um, at that four range, four five range, as far as how people perceive the district to be effective. Again, this was an effectiveness question about um, handling their primary and secondary water concerns, and we're gonna talk about what those primary and secondary water concerns. So while we uh, think that this is great, it definitely leaves uh, room for improvement in our opinion and from a leadership perspective at looking at how can we better target our communications, target the work that we're doing, and then not necessarily, we certainly won't change the four core mission areas of the district, but the way in which we execute those and talk about them, we can do a better job. So this was a uh, graph of district staff, and I understand that the legend at the top is hard to see. What's important for your purposes is that this is bad and this side is good. So darker is what we don't want, moving to right is what we do want. And so what the, uh, this graph shows is that uh, district staff scored the highest in knowledge and in friendliness. So people generally think that they know what they're talking about and that we're friendly. What we score the lowest in, and again, I think low is we need to be understand that it's uh, relative to the other scores where responsiveness, though it was still slightly positive. So again, lots of room, and you can see responsiveness is there on the far side, it was the lowest of the four. Um, still slightly positive, but again, room for improvement. Uh, so when we asked about, I mentioned those primary and secondary concerns of the public before, and of the five that you see listed here, springs preservation, water quality, recreation, water supply, and agriculture slash, slash business use, springs preservation was overwhelmingly the um, highest concern of those 305 responses with water quality, recreation, water supply, and agriculture and business use you see down. So what this means from a communication and outreach standpoint, whether it's not just for the comm staff, but also for all district staff, is that if we can take the work that we're doing and we can wrap it in a Springs Preservation bow or tie it back to a Springs Preservation message, which basically everything we do can be tied back to a Springs Preservation <coughs> message, then that's gonna be more readily accepted by the public than if we talk about it from a recreation or water supply standpoint. So that is extremely 
extremely helpful, again, from tailoring messages uh, out of our shop. So this was a chart of the most frequented uh, land or water resource use in the district springs and rivers were our most frequented. This is no surprise to me at all. This is what we call um, a word map of words that are used and spoken about when we did a search of the district. The larger the term, the more frequently it was used. And again, I just want to um, couch this with the fact that this was done last summer. And so you'll see things on here like FDEP, um, uh, former secretary uh, Valentine's name is on there. And again, this was relative to what was going on in Tallahassee and his previous work here at the district. So what's important about this slide is that this was the internal staff perception of how we communicate to the public and what the pub, how public receives information from us. So district staff said the public receives their information from us and they want to receive it through our website and through monthly meetings. That was our opinion. That's what we thought that the public wanted to receive information from us. Well, when we asked the public how they wanted to receive from us, they said, well, actually, you're incorrect. We want to hear from you. And what we look to you for is on social media, local newspapers, community events. And then, you know, obviously the numbers go down from there. So our internal perception of how we should be communicating versus the actual reality of how we should be communicating weren't the same. And we have done a, and we had started doing this prior to the study, but we did a complete 180 and really started focusing on, and y'all have seen this, a lot of our efforts on social media. So we get a ton of questions on there, we respond, we've implemented, well, we have some policies and procedures that will come before you hopefully next month that outline the responsiveness time from a customer service standpoint, how we handle positive comments, negative comments, how we archive comments, all because of this driven nature of our local community relative to social media. And also looking at quality over quantity when it comes to local newspapers, and then we've ramped up our engagement too in local community events like festivals, presentations, outreach. Um, we're looking to kick off a, a very focused outreach campaign October 1st. So relative to that news media comment here is what you're looking at is a graph of press releases that were written by the district, which is, and I, I was told that the colors don't translate, but that top yellow gold line are press releases that were written by the district. The dark color, which is this middle color, were press releases that were picked up that we actually wrote. And then the bottom color, which is a bluish green, were articles that were written about us, but not necessarily things that we promoted internally. So they were things that people said about us. The important thing to see here, is, and the important thing to note, is that these are over large media outlets in the large media outlets in the district. So this does not include results from places like the Gilchrist County Journal or the Taco Times or other really small news journals. So this was the Swanee Democrat, the Lake City Reporter, the Gainesville Sun, even the Orlando Sentinel has picked us up a couple times. And so I just want to make sure that our cover I want to make sure you understand that our coverage is actually higher because of those smaller journals, but the way to, they don't put out their tracking analytics the same way that these do, and so we didn't capture them the same way. Um, but the point here, the overall point is that quality, or I'm sorry, quantity doesn't always equal quality. So we put out less press releases in 2016, 2017 than we did in previous years, but we often had better coverage where they were talking about the things we wanted them to talk about instead of just talking about us. So, and then 2018, that was only a partial year, so we actually had a lot more information put out that way. So when it came to talking to employees about how the district can do a better job of giving them the outreach information that they need, they talked about organizational clarity and message preparedness were the two main themes that uh, came out. And again, they said we did somewhat well on being able to prepare them for communication. Largely this was focused around interviews. And these were some comments from staff that we really said, okay, how can we do better um, from a leadership and comms perspective? They talked about last minute coordination, no prep for interviews. Uh, out of communications, we certainly feel that pressure as well. Um, legislative responses, especially during session. 
lack of knowledge, they didn't have a holistic understanding of things that were going on in the district, um, and then talking points for a hot topic. So I could give you a laundry list of 10 things that we have done since this time to help overcome this problem. Things as simple as um, pooling all of our talking points in a library, all the way to um, a project coordination meeting that is coming out of um, the executive level leadership team where people from all the program areas are getting together to talk about specific projects, monitoring, so that we're not communicating in silos. So it has really been um, an effort out of the executive director's office to say, okay, how can we better communicate across all of our program areas so people don't feel like they're unprepared. And I certainly have been able to increase my awareness. So the next step, uh, district brain guy, and these again, these are very communication office focused, but because of largely the separate, but um, district brain guide and template materials. Again, we've got that. It's going around for final review right now. Um, media and public workshop training, talking points, library and access, which I just mentioned. Outreach procedures and standards. This again, I hope to bring before it all uh, next month. And then staff engagement and outreach efforts. So not just um, being very intentional about how we spend time in our community with our schools, our stakeholders, and our local governmental agencies to make sure that we have some influence over what's being said about us um, and that we give the truth about the messages about what we're being, what we're doing and what's being done versus just being uh, the victims of other people's opinions about the district and the district staff. That's all I have. If you would yep. like a copy of the full review, I can certainly of the full report. I can certainly provide that to you. But we're excited to do that. So, in light of that, um, I have another item. It's on page EO, page 13. It's item number 34 for your attention. So, um, this is a grant that we brought. Just for your attention, I would say a few, what, six months ago, uh, that the district was applying for a NPS 319, so a non point source uh, water quality grant with the Florida Department of, I'm sorry, the Florida Department of Environmental Protection. It's federal funds that comes down through the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. And we applied for that grant and have been, with governing board approval, have been approved to receive those funding dollars. So that grant will allow us to do a district-wide campaign, which as far as I know, we have never had that, this kind of funding to be able to do that level of a campaign. And um, $300,000 will go a long way for marketing in our district. So again, the focus is work quality, which with the new governor's initiatives, this fits right into the work that they're doing. Um, concerns that I've heard throughout the board meetings, not only today, but over the past uh, two and a half years, this certainly fits in with initiatives that we're doing with the district. So we would receive this money, again, given governing board approval, and hire a public relations firm to come in and work with us to say these are the deliverables that we want to reach over a three-year period, and we would have um, quantitative and qualitative results to actually show the benefits of the campaign. So. Um, very research driven. And with that, staff recommends the governing board authorize the executive director to enter into agreement with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to accept $300,000 in a multimedia campaign for spring water quality and resource awareness in the Florida South. I'm going to go to the I hope all the paperwork doesn't make me regret what we have time for, but thank you.